all right what's up guys welcome back to my channel i know it's been so long oh, that's because i had finals week and then i was getting my new car and quitting jobs and studying for my finals so that's what this video is basically going to be about today it's just going to be about um been going on did I pass or no um but first of all my lips are hella dry I can't I'm so sorry I can't okay All right, so I'm just gonna hop into it. There's not really an order for this video. Um, but let's talk about finals week. So as you all know, I am LPN. I'm an LPN student and I do night classes. So technically I'm part-time. So most of my classes are were broken up into parts, like my fundamentals, for example. Um, this quarter I took part one, um, and then for the next quarter you would take part two, two, and then you put it all together, and then you would have a final over everything at the end of that class. So I didn't really have a final. I did. I just had kind of like a last exam, like a final exam. Not really a final exam, but we had three exams and we took exam three. That's basically how it went. So with that um my anatomy and my fundamentals final was monday and tuesday um the 26th and the tw no the 25th and the 26th um so i just took them and i got my scores back i got my scores back right away because it doesn't really take them long we do scantron scantron sheets so it didn't really take them it doesn't really take them that long to give me back my grade so I got my grade back on Tuesday night so for the week before that though I had my lab CPE which is like my final and that was over hand washing vital signs sterile wound changes and my head to toe assessment so that final came first. It came, I don't remember what day it was. It was it was on Wednesday, I just don't remember the date. It was like the 20th, I think. So that was my um, final for that class. Uh, but prior to that, the week before that, that Wednesday, we had an early check off day. So you could do, so we did hand washing and vital signs as like an early check off that way we could leave early um, or if somebody needed to retake something it allowed it gave them that time to do that as well so going back to that the early check off day I did my hand washing awesome um, and I did my vital signs sorry I'm looking at the kids across the street playing um, I did my vital signs so with our vital signs, you know, pain, blood pressure, respirations, temperature, all that. Um, and you had to say the whole spiel as if you're just coming into a patient's room to take their vital signs. So I did that. I did not, I did not pass blood pressure that time. I don't know what I got wrong. My school allows you to get four degree not degrees but four numbers above or below what the teacher got she didn't tell me if I got it above or below she just said I didn't make the four um, digit mark um, my teacher had said what she had gotten as the BP uh, the girl looked at her like what that was my BP she was like my BP has never been that low she, <laughs> she was like 
she's like, wait, can we do it again? Because now I'm kind of concerned. <laughs> I, it, it's not a big issue. I wasn't upset about it because... One, you get three chances to get it right, so that was just strike one. So I had two more chances to get it right. And two, um, a girl in my class who has really good veins and all that, she was like, you can do it on me next time and we'll see how it goes. And I was like, okay, thanks. So fast forward to that Wednesday, I um, my I had two instructor, instructors. I had two instructors and the lady who was with me that Wednesday that Wednesday yeah that Wednesday to do the blood pressure is the assistant and so this time I asked for my teacher to help me because I asked her to help me see if I was doing it right first off and then second off I asked her if she would check me off so around that so she let me go first to get it out of the way um with CPEs you have to Wear your scrubs. If you have tattoos, you know, you got to cover them up. I have a tattoo right here. Um, and I'm about to get another one on Monday. Hopefully Monday. Um, so I had to cover it up. So I just got a long black shirt. And, you know, I didn't have the right shoes on. But I did have the right color shoes. I don't think they really take that into account and all that. I don't know. I don't know, but whatever. So I was all dressed. I had my stethoscope. I had my blood pressure cuff. The thing, let me just say this for a minute. Y'all see my arms? Like, my whole family, we have big arms. So the blood pressure cuff will fit me and my little brother. But other than that, it doesn't fit anybody else in my house. It doesn't fit my boyfriend. When I did it on him this Saturday after I had failed, um... The first time, the first BP, uh, it popped off like three or four times and I was just done. I had a headache. I was tired. I was getting the little finals cold or whatever you want to call it. So I was just, I was done. So <laughs> the rest of the night I was taking blood pressure on myself and I still, when I get things wrong, I'm the type of person who likes to know why I got it wrong. And so, I. Uh, she couldn't I didn't know why she didn't tell me why I got it wrong she didn't tell me what I was doing wrong if I did anything well I know I did things wrong clearly but she didn't tell me what I got wrong so I couldn't really practice what I got wrong so I was just practicing it the way that I knew it so um I was just practicing it all night Saturday night for about an hour or so and then fast forward to Wednesday I had, like I said, I had asked for that instructor, and she, she let me do a, like, she let me practice it one time, just to make sure, because I was like, I don't know why I got it wrong, I don't know what I did wrong, so can I do it first, and then, like, you check me off for it, just make sure I'm doing it right, because I don't know if I'm absolutely doing it wrong, so she said, yeah, so I practiced it. And then I did it. I got it right. She said, yeah, you got it right. You did everything right. Everything looks right to me. I guess it was just hearing it. And I was like, I guess so. I don't know um, really how to fix that. And she was like, just practice. So I'm just, I've just been practicing blood pressure over and over again. Um, now that I know for sure that I'm doing it right, um, I've just been practicing it. Excuse me. So then, after that, we had to do our head to toe assessment and our sterile wound dresses. My first, I did first. We did sterile wound dresses. Um, everything looks. Everything was going good. I was doing good. I passed it. I passed it the first time. Um, <laughs> but my what my teacher does is if you know, like if you broke sterile field or if you know that like something has gone wrong as long as you just tell her like hey I broke sterile field this is why I'm not gonna do that again or this is how I can make it better things like that or 
um, like, oh, the gauze accidentally touched the patient's skin or it came out of sterile field, this is what I would do um, to uh, make that up and, you know, all that. So I did that. I broke sterile field. I want to, no. I broke sterile field three times. The first time was just me being stupid. I literally leaned across the table. Don't ask me why. I leaned across the table to grab the saline and broke my sterile field. And I was like, why did I do that? Because, like, I never, I had never done that in practice. I was like, why did I do that? So I don't know why I did that. I was like, oh, I broke sterile field. I reached across the table. This is how I would do it. And I just reached across, grabbed it, and not across, but I reached around and I grabbed it and I did it and it was good. Um, so she was like, I'm glad that you noticed that you broke sterile field. Um, and you told me what would you do instead. So you're good. Keep going. So I kept going. Um, you know, I did the whole procedure. The only time I broke sterile field the second time was the gauze touched the skin. Well, touch the outside of the wound to where technically I, it's breaking sterile field. So I would have to get new gauze and all that. Um, it's just, you know, if you've ever done wound changes on the dummies with the wounds, it's, it's hard because, you know, it's not like real skin. It doesn't move. Like, you know, it's harder to put the gauze in there and make it stay. So, you know, whatever. So, that was good. I got checked off for that. Then I had to do head-to-toe assessment. Um, so, I just made a... Let me see if I can get it out. I just made... Um, a script oh Jesus I just made a script it's front and back I made a whole that's not script this is a this is my sterile dressing change script that I had and then this is my head to toe one so the blue was dialogue because you did have to speak like I'm checking this for this um you know the basics so I have that and then so blue is dialogue yellow is actions so it's all that like I said it's front and back so it's like technically six pages so yeah so that was that this is my sterile one I didn't really color it because it's pretty basic and then I just have the sterile steps and all that so those are my scripts. So while I was waiting, I was reading this over and over in my head, practicing my um, the actions and all that. So when it came time to do it, the only thing that I forgot to do but caught myself before I said I was done was I forgot to check the warmth and of your arm of the arms and check for any edema in the arms or anything like that so that was so but I realized that I forgot to do it before you know like I handed the patient their call light and let them know if they needed anything lowered the bed I remembered it before I said I was done so she didn't even count it off um, and for once I remembered to do everything I was so proud of myself you guys I was like I did everything Woo! and then I was able to go home um, well I didn't go home I went and I got my new car from my dad's house I went and I picked it up after that and then I was done with that she put the grades in I passed sorry I still have this cold she put the grades in and I passed and yeah so that's how that went so then it was just studying for my anatomy exam which was over everything and then my fundamentals so these girls in my class 
were nice enough to let me study with them, which has actually really, really helped. Hopefully, I can continue studying with them because it, um, you know, it's, if you've never studied in a group before and you're in nursing school, I would really try it out. Um, just because any points you're having trouble with, um, like other, this one girl in my class, she really understood a lot of it. So whenever I didn't understand something or I had something backwards, I, um, asked her about it. And literally the whole time I was like, oh, that makes sense now. That connects now. Like I get it. Like it just, it opened it up for me and it really, 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 really helped me. So yeah, this was my anatomy textbook. Um, and I did okay on the exam. The exam was a hundred questions. It's usually 50, but it was a hundred for the final because it was over everything. So one question was worth one. No, each question was worth one point. So overall, I did good. What did I get? I got a 87. Wasn't It wasn't what I was aiming for, but that's... That's completely fine. I'm still working on my studying skills. I'm still getting used to, you know, studying with people. And I think, like, in the next term, if I continue studying in the groups, it will be, like, I'll do better on my exams. And I had a lot going on, so I wasn't as dedicated as I made a promise to myself that I would be so that also took an effect but I'm gonna do better I promise I'll do better so I passed my exam my CPEs for my lab if I the way it works for my school if I don't know if it works for other schools like this but if you don't my 129 nursing fundamentals and my fundamentals lab was connected so if you Say you pass one but fail another, you have to do them both over again. If you fail both, you have to do them both over again. Um, so you really have to pass both. If you don't pass both, you have to do both of them again. So. So yeah, the pressure was on. Um, so my anatomy test was on Monday. Um... I passed I got a 87 like I said before wasn't happy about it but I passed overall my grade in that class was the 83 you have to have at least a 76 or above to pass the class and move on so I passed I'm moving on anatomy wise um, then Tuesday was my fundamentals we when I was studying with the girls, we focused on anatomy more just because it was over everything, while my fundamentals was just over four chapters. So we focused more on making sure we remember everything we needed to remember for our anatomy class. So not saying we didn't study for it, but we did. Um, and even <clears throat> we studied after my anatomy final. So we went and we got food. And then we came back to the school and we studied until we had to leave um, for fundamentals. And then I came home, I listened to my lectures while I was going through the PowerPoints, the four PowerPoints that we had over that for that exam. And then um, I went to sleep. <laughs> I studied for like an hour and a half maybe and then I went to sleep. I was so tired. So, but long story short, the exam was 50 questions and um, each question was worth two and I had a 78 in this class. So I kind of had some leeway but not a lot. Um, but, so I took the exam, and I felt okay about it. It wasn't too hard. My fundamentals teacher does her test format in 
NCLEX style questions, so it kind of makes it a bit harder. Just because, you know, you have to take that information and apply it to um, an actual NCLEX style question, which is hard because I wasn't used to those kind of questions, you know, and it's hard studying for those kind of questions because the first exam... I was having so much trouble studying for it. I got a 76, so I passed it. But we had a conference, and she was like, I can tell you understand the information. It's just putting it in the nursing aspects. And I'm like, yeah, I honestly, I didn't know how to study for it the first time around. I still kind of don't know. Well, I kind of know how to study for it now. Um, But the first time I did it. And so, that's why I got what I got. But, she was like, I can really tell you know the information. It's just, you know, applying it. So, yeah, that was that. Um, But, yeah. Basically, I got a 76 again. (laughs) On the exam three so it did drop my grade down but it dropped it down to a 76 and you have to have at least a 76 or higher to move on so technically i am moving on baby i'm going to the next quarter i don't have to redo those classes and (laughs) the girls that i'm in a group chat with they was like you're moving on and i was like who me (laughs) and they was like yes you and i was like on so but they did say we're gonna try and get it better because it is two parts so I'm doing part two next semester so I really have to get it down and then we'll have a final exam over everything stuff from last quarter and this quarter that I'm going into there will be a final over everything including math so yeah But I passed. I passed all my classes. Not with the grades that I wanted. But. It's okay. You know I'm learning. Um, I'm changing my study methods as I go along. That's why. That's one reason why I didn't. Upload how I study for fundamentals. Or how I study. Just because I'm still. I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, I don't have a set study method of how I study. But I overall, my the main thing I do when I study is I record my classes. So I listen to those recordings. And um, like when I'm driving or working out or so, like just chilling, I will listen to it. I will listen to the recordings. And then... Every once in a while, I actually get the notes that go with that recording, and I list and I listen while follow along, following along with the notes. And then um, I got a whiteboard, and um, I got some markers, expo markers, and eraser. So I plan on getting a bigger whiteboard. Just because the one I have is it's just a little a little one. But I plan on getting a bigger one. So hopefully I can get one when I go school supply shopping on Saturday, which is tomorrow. And then oops. I won't have to keep using the small board. I won't have to keep using the small board. So yeah. So yeah. But, um, alright, moving on to my two jobs. I no longer have two jobs. I quit my second job just because, it wasn't because I couldn't handle it, because honestly I had a set schedule down. It was just, they were not 
as lenient as they said they would when I applied for the job and told them I was going to nursing school in January. Uh, they were they just they weren't as lenient as they said they would like anytime like you know some things will come up in nursing school where you have to get things done or like um I had to take a CPR class I'm already CPR I was CPR certified prior to that but I had AED um let me just get it for you oh never mind I had the AED I didn't have the BLS one, and for a nursing school, you have to have the BLS one. And I had the first aid AED one, um, or whatever it's called. So I had to take the CPR class, and I told them my CPR, I was told my CPR class would be 10 to 1, but they said it was 4 hours. And in my head, I was like, that's not 4 hours, but maybe they mean 10 to 1. So I told my job my CPR class was 10 to 1, and at this point, I was already questioning quitting just because of prior instances that had happened um, and they were basically like putting like if something would happen I would be the main one receiving blame for it like the like for let me just finish telling you the story so when Saturday came around to take my CPR class I got there and it was around 12:50 when we had our lunch break and I was like wait a minute I'm not gonna be able to get to work by 1 meanwhile this guy had still put on the schedule 1 o'clock when I told him my CPR class was 10 to 1 and he got mad at me because I didn't realize that he had said 1 to 5 sir I had had two hours of sleep prior before if I did not catch that you said 1 to 5 that's not just my fault because at the end of the day I told you 10 to 1 so if I don't always catch things that's not just my fault I like I said I had two hours of sleep the day before um, and it was mid semester like the semester was almost over so I was I was tired but he didn't want to own up to the fact that he said 1 to 5 and put it on the schedule 1 to 5 but whatever um, so that was just that was my life. that was my breaking point. That's when I was like, that's that was the same night I went home and I typed up my my two week notice because at that point I was done. Like I walked into work at two twenty, um, and I had called and let them know, and they was like, "We'll text so and so." I don't have so and so's number. That's why I'm calling and letting you know. If I had so and so's number, I would have I would have texted it. So. That was just a whole big ordeal, but basically I'm not working two jobs anymore. I'm sticking with my one job. Around summertime, I do 40-hour weeks just because school time's out, so I'm able to work more. So I'll be doing 7 to 3, and then my earliest class starts at 5, so I'll be able to get my big, my big loans, my big, big, big checks and be able to continue paying for my schooling because as you if you don't know I'm paying for my schooling um, by myself so I'm on a payment plan with them so yeah all my but my payments are paid off until July so I'm good for right now but I was you know I pay insurance on my car pay my I'm paying my car off um, you know, putting gas in my car, all that, paying for my own school supplies. So I need money, and I need money to pay for my my other bills and stuff like that. So, yeah. So that was that. If you want a video on how I balance working two jobs and going to nursing school, just leave a comment down below, and I will upload it. I will gladly tell you guys my whole schedule, how I had it set up. I was literally had it scheduled by time but it's okay so will I get a second job you know I don't know